Hi, I wanted to give a little tutorial on using the terminal, uh, specifically the bash shell, um, Unix commands, and file structure, and also VI. This little list over here will kind of guide our tutorial today. I happen to be using Mac OS X, but what I say today will also apply to Linux and other Unix-based systems. And also on Windows, you can emulate many of these functionalities um, using SigWin, or if you're doing network-focused things, um, through PuTTY, which is very popular. So most of us started using computers with a graphical user interface, um, or a GUI as they're called, but before that, a command line interface was all there was. Now, inside a terminal window, there's a program that responds to your commands and it's called a shell. And you can change out your shell. I'm using the default shell which is called bash. That stands for born again shell. A little bit of a joke there. There was a born shell and this is an improvement on it. Um, so let's start getting into the terminal. So let's put in a command. How about um, who am I? On Unix based systems you have to be logged in. So I'll put this in and it says, I'm not surprised, um, that I'm logged in as Brett Roberry, which is who I am. Now there's a file structure on Unix. We can find out where we are by typing in the present working directory. A directory is the same thing as a folder. So you can see here, I am at users and Brett Roberry below that. Now I can look at what is inside a directory by make, making a listing. That's ls. And you can see um, what's contained in the directory users slash Brett Roberry. Now I can move around in directories by issuing this command. It's change directory. Now something interesting dot is a shortcut representing the current directory you're in. So if I change directories to the present working directory, you'll see I'm actually still in the same place. Dot dot is a shortcut that stands for um, the parent directory or one level up in the hierarchy. So if I type that in, you'll see that I am one level up. I'm just in users. And the base level directory in a Unix system is called root. It's indicated just with that slash. That's why these absolute path names, which are referenced all the way from root, begin with slash. So it's root, within root, users, within users, Brett Roberry. So now, um, let's get a feeling for um, some other operations. So I'm going to go back into users and I'm going to go in Documents. Uh, oops, that's not possible. I can hit Tab uh, to autocomplete. By the way, that's a nice tip. So I want to go into Documents, and let's do that. Now there's another command called Make Directory, and it's MKDIR. And I'm going to call this directory um, Unix Tutorial. So I'll make sure that it's there. I can see Unix tutorial right there. So I'm going to move into that directory and it's empty. And I'm going to clear the screen here. So let's say that I want to create a file. The basic text editor is called vi. If I want to create a file, um, I just supply the name. And if I want to open an existing file, if I supply the name, it will just open it. So let's make a file called program.c. And this is vi. You can see the cursor where I am. These little squigglies just mean they're blank lines. Down here it says the name of the file I'm in. And if I want to start typing, I can put an i. That puts me in insert mode. See the mode that's indicated changed down there. And I can just make a little program. Um, int main. Um, let's do a print function. 
hello world. Um, we might want to give a new line character there and close up the function. Okay, so I'm done with this. Now, if I hit escape, I can save my file, I can type kind of cryptic, colon, the two dots, W, and that will save. So you can see down below it says that I wrote four lines and 41 columns, and it's been saved, so that's good. I can exit by typing colon Q, and that will take me out, and I'm back in, uh, in the bash shell. So I can go back into my program, obviously, the same way. And if I make another change, so I'll go into insert mode, again, hit I. Uh, maybe I wanted to change this to say, hello, Brett. So if I hit escape colon Q to quit, notice I haven't saved, there will be this little warning that pops up, hey, um, you haven't written or saved since the last change you made. Oh, well, that's that's true. So um, I can hit Q, and again, it'll give me the same warning. If I hit Q bang, like it said, I can override. So this will be like quit without saving. So go back in here, and it's as I left it. Now another thing you can do, go back in insert mode by hitting I, uh, when I make a change, um, this will be the most frequent thing you'll do. When you hit escape colon WQ, it will save and quit at the same time. And we'll just make sure that it worked, and it did. So we'll get out of there. So that's a brief overview of, of VI. Now, um, another thing, this is just kind of handy sometimes, maybe you just want a quick calendar. So you type cal, and there it is. So let's refresh our memory here. Let's look, what's in this directory? It looks like just program.c. Okay, uh, what if I want to make a copy of this program? So maybe I'll type copy program and I want to make a copy of it. I'll call it copy.c. So that made a copy of it in the current directory and there it is. And you can see that it has exactly the same contents. Now there's a funny thing here. There isn't a command for renaming a file. Um, you use move. Now move is what you would use to move something around the file system but it's also what you use to rename something. So if I say move copy.c to copy2.c, it will move it, and you can see that copy is no longer there, but there's copy2. So kind of a funny thing there. Now I can uh, remove a file by typing rm. So let's remove copy2, and you see that it's no longer there. And another thing we can do is we can remove a directory. So I want, let's just make a directory in here real quick. Um, we'll call it dummy directory. Oops. And there it is. Um, if I try to remove dummy directory, it says, no, you can't remove a directory with the remove command. So it's rmdir, kind of like make directory mkdir. So if we look, it's gone. And the last thing that's good to do, you probably won't do this on your own system very much, but if you're logged in remotely, um, you can type logout, and there you go.